What is up guys, Ivan here with GetIvan.com and in this video we're going to be talking about how to set up additional email address aliases inside of G Suite. So for years I've been using a variety of SMTP solutions. I basically get those things verified through DNS records and then I would set up forwarding rules and filters through the SMTP providers. But recently I finally had a use case where I had to get mail records set up beforehand with forwarding, and then I was I would be able to verify for a particular kind of SMTP provider. So that forced me to really figure out this aliasing stuff, and it's something I've been putting off for a long time because I absolutely hate the um, Google Admin backend area. I think it's horribly designed UI, but I figured out how to navigate it and I want to sort of show you guys this process because it's actually really useful if you can get the process down. So here's a page, add multiple domains or domain aliases. I just wanted to show you guys, there's a point here that says a domain alias. You and your users get email addresses at the domain, send email and receive email at your primary domain and domain alias, no additional cost. So I just wanted to emphasize that, excuse me, setting up these email addresses on your domain aliases doesn't cost you extra with your G Suite account. If you try to add new emails on your root uh, G Suite primary domain, then you will get charged additional fees per user. That's an easy mistake to make. So um, when we are looking at the Google admin backend, obviously it's at admin.google.com. You want to go to, let's just start at the beginning here under Google admin. I'm, kind of, I'm always kind of paranoid about showing this area because you just never know what sensitive data there might be. But in the main menu here, we go to domains and then under domains, we go to manage domains. And this is an area where we can uh, set up these aliases. So you just click right here, add a domain alias. Then you'll enter in an alias. And uh, I guess I'll just make something up for the moment, like test. Then go to uh, continue, or sorry, test.goodivan.com. Okay. And then, uh, continue and verify domain ownership. So this is kind of a tricky section. I remember looking at this years ago and and uh, feeling like it, it really, th this is like the old search console type of verification area. I think if you look at the favicon, you can even see the, old, the, the, the search console favicon there. But um, under alternate methods, they have, of course, your typical on-site tags and of course, analytics and things like that. But there's no site in this case with your alias unless you want to go through all that extra trouble. So you've got to do it this way. Um, and the trick is you have to go to the very bottom and click other, and then it'll, it'll give you a text record, which you can use at whatever, uh, uh, whatever DNS service that you, you have. At the moment, I'm using Google DNS for this property. And uh, not too distant future, I'll be switching this asset to Cloudflare DNS. But um, basically, you'll just do your subdomain here on your, uh, well, you do whatever your domain is. Of course, in this case, mine is test.getivan.com. I like to do this CTL at five hours. Um, you wanna go down to text record. And then obviously you paste that string in, click create and you'll be good to go. It, it might take a couple of minutes for that to to uh, to register. Then you'll click verify. I'm not gonna go through this process here because I don't wanna waste time. And you should be good to go, I, I believe. Let's skip ahead here and check. Once that gets verified, you can click continue. You, you'll click continue, it'll say you're done and it'll take you to the main menu here. And then you can, as you can see at the top, well, it usually does a tool tip that says you can type things like set up MX records. This one actually doesn't work. There's a surprising number of dead links in the, uh, um, just the, the G Suite admin area and help docs and things like that. But 
The link you're looking for is this one here, how to set up MX records. I haven't seen what this one is. This one might be better. No, you don't you don't need that one. It's the, the, the second one, set up MX records for G Suite Gmail. So this one, uh, you can probably just Google this doc. They're, they have this stuff in other places too, other setup areas, but this is easy enough. And it kind of shows you if, if you have a, a host name or an alias section, depending on your DNS provider, then you'll, you'll just leave it blank or put an at symbol for, to represent the root um, of, of that entity that you're putting records in for. So uh, you basically just do this priority number and then a space and then you'll put this string here so i'm gonna i'm gonna show you an example and then i'm gonna fast forward here give me one moment um so let me show you how to add an mx when you go to add a new record set obviously and you'll want to be on the right i'm gonna be on the right subdomain so i'm gonna put test.getiving.com do this to five hours. I'm going to set the MX record here, and then I'm going to go one space. You see this one actually gives you an example, one, two, three, and then there's a mail server. So one space this, add an item, five space. Me. Tabs open here. And then I'm going to grab all these. This is one, two, three, four. So you basically just follow the instructions. So five, 10, et cetera. So I'll skip ahead to the end of this. So there it is, you'll put them all there and hit go. And so that all is basically good to go as long as you did all of those from, there's only one that's set to one and then two that are five and then two that are 10. Um, this one says time to live 3,600. You can do that, I suppose. It's, I don't think it's a huge deal okay so so we've set we, we verified the property and created the alias right so the alias exists we've also created mx records so now there are there's digital mailbox you know being hosted by uh by google so that this this uh, uh alias can send and receive mail right and uh then there's the issue of DKIM and SPF records for, you know, very, very authentication purposes and what have you. So under, look at the, the menu taxonomy here. When you're at the main menu, basically, here, let me, let me go open a different tab. You can click on apps, or let me just do this. Then you go to G Suite. Then you'll click on Gmail. You can also type this stuff in the, the bar here just to make it faster, but I just want to show you where it's located so it's not ambiguous. And then at the very bottom, you'll click on, uh, no, you'll click on authenticate email for this one. But later on, we're also going to click on advanced settings. So in this case, we're on authenticate email. So I select the domain, and in this case, I selected test.getivin.com when I click this dropdown. And then we have to generate these records. So I'm not going to do this because there's, I don't need to. It'll generate a DNS text record name. Or, let me go ahead and do this because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to delete this anyways. So make sure that you don't do the really long DKIM. It's more secure, but... The thing is that even even in Google's DNS and in, I'm sure in other DNS, like if if the if the DKIM length is too long, what you have to do is you have to split up the streams in order for it to to process correctly. Otherwise, it's it's at, the strings are too long. A lot of the DNS providers don't seem to be able to read those long strings. Well, I don't know about a lot of the DNS providers, but some of the ones that I've used, they can't read the really long encryption uh length uh, so i've had to like cut cut up the string and in some cases i have to actually put it in backwards just a pain so just do the do the the shorter link there or if you want to do the other one that's up to you um i'm just going to go ahead and generate this 
So DNS host name, text record name. So basically you grab this and then let's skip ahead here. And you go back and you find that tax record that you created for your entity and, and where you verified the property, the alias, and then you can just add lines, new lines. But um, actually, you know what, for this one though, because we have to have a different host, or was that tab? So this is a different host name. So we actually can't use that same text record, my bad. We have to create a new one um, for this. I'm trying to think though, can we put this? In some cases, with some services, I've had to put this this record on the this root here in order for it to work. You're supposed this is supposed to work, and that's not always the case. But I'm sure it'll be fine. We'll go ahead and follow directions. So I'm going to create a new record real quick. And this one is going to be test. And up here in the beginning, I'm going to put this host name that they gave me: Google dot such and such domain key. Dot test so you you put this on top of the the domain that you're trying to you know add the record to so this is a text record i'm going to just put five hours here and then i'm going to paste that dkim value it, it, google dns is a real pain this is one, one of the biggest one of the many reasons that I'm moving away from them in not too distant future, you have to quote white spaces with them because they're apparently they're not clever enough to do that themselves. So anywhere there's a space in your stuff, you have to create quotations that quote a space. Otherwise their stuff freaks out and doesn't work properly. So I'm gonna click create on this. That should be get good to go. It'll, it'll authenticate. We don't need to do this. You don't actually need to do this in order to get this to work properly. But if you want if you want your deliverability, like if you're sending or you're, I mean, I guess if you want to ensure that it's going to land properly, then you, then you can do this also. But um, actually, if, if, if you're just using it for forwarding purposes to your own properties, you don't even need to do it. Because the next step is to do the advanced settings here. Um, to set up the routing, so set up that actual forwarding rule. So go to advanced settings in that, that Gmail area that I showed you guys uh, under the app. You know, you go to the main menu, then you go to the apps, then you go to Gmail, then you go to advanced settings there. So under advanced settings, it's you can do things under general settings, and there's a bunch of other things. I don't know a whole lot about a lot of things back here. Um, but under default routing... I have gotten this to work. So basically you just go to add setting, then you go to single recipient here. In this case, I might want to forward email from test dot, uh, test dot get Ivan dot com to, uh, to support at get Ivan dot com, for example. And you want to modify the message that is received. Wait a second, specify envelope recipients to match. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Let's see here. I think it's down here. Envelope recipient. Yeah, my bad. This is the uh, this is the recipient that it's coming from. I got confused for a second. So this would be something like support at test.getivan.com. So this is that entity, that alias we just set up. And then you can actually check off this rule that says bypass spam filter for this message. So if you if you select that, there's never going to be a, I mean, there shouldn't be a deliverability issue to your own you know, entity because, uh, you know, it's, it's uh, G Suite to G Suite and bypassing the, the spam filter here. Um, anyways, so then you're going to go to envelope recipient, change envelope recipient, replace recipient to. So this is where you go support at getivan.com. So this, this is the place that you want to go to. So this is the this is the entity where you're receiving mail and you want to forward mail that's going to this place, right? And then you're sending it to, you're going to change the envelope recipient and you're going to replace it with this this address. So uh, 
Now I've done both of these. It seems to work with both of these options. I'm not clear on how this works. This it, this just says perform this action on non-recognized and not and recognized addresses or just non-recognized. I'm not really sure what that's about. I just did both of them here in this case, so I think that should be fine. Um, so yeah, let's move on. Click save there. So I haven't done that DKIM thing, but even without it, this is going to work. But basically, if we go to uh, before I, before I send a test mail, I just want to show you that if we go to e, the uh, Gmail settings area uh, up here in this cog, you can go to accounts and then you can go to send mail as. So this is kind of like, I mean, it's not exactly, I mean, I, you're always sending it as an alias, but what it does is it allows you to, to click this drop down. Um, here, let me show you. If I click add email address, then it'll ask me what I want to call that address. And then we can put it in there and it'll, you can see it says treat as an alias. So once you click next on that, um, I won't go through this example here, but all this requires to be approved is the, is, is for verification to this address. So once you put the address in like this, so test support, for example, would be the name. And then the email address could be support at test.getivan.com. So once you click next here, it will base, it'll just send a verification email to this address. And if you already set up the forwarding, then you can just go into your email and, and approve it. And what that allows you to do, so this is just kind of another benefit of this aliasing system. You can click compose and uh, and then there's a drop down under from where you can where you can send from these different aliases, these different entities. And if you've got the forwarding set up right, then it will reply to your primary inbox. So there's kind of like this layer of protection where you can sort of send out and still receive to your primary inbox but then not necessarily expose your, your, your primary inbox. So it's, it's just a neat little, little trick and it, it has its uses, you know, especially if you have different departments and what have you. Um, okay. Let's do a test though. And then I'll jump ahead to the test. Let me grab, um, could have done a test with that actually, but let me just grab a, uh, what do you call it? Uh, tab send test email type of service we'll just grab one of these so here we go let's try this one uh let's go support at test.getivan.com It, I guess it sent something. So let's go jump ahead and see if it worked. So as you can see, this just sent zero minutes ago. Here's the test. And then we look, it was sent to support at test.getivan.com. Um, so yeah, the forwarding worked. It's pretty simple. I mean, there's a lot of different things just to recap that. Um, you've got to go into... Let me see here. <laughs> okay, so you have to go into domains, uh, manage domains, and this is where you add domain alias. And then from there, you can add MX records with this, uh, you know, this uh, set up MX records for G Suite Gmail using this stuff here over in your, your DNS provider. And then you can, if you want to, go and set up your DKIM and authentication. And I thought there was an SPF. Maybe the SPF thing is somewhere else. I don't know. Um, and then from there, you go and into the advanced settings for Gmail. And by the way, this 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 uh, DKIM authentication is under the settings for Gmail also under apps. But yeah, anyways, after that, you go to the advanced settings and then you go to default routing. And this is where you can go to add setting and 
do all those various things. And if you want to from there, then you can come in and go to your settings in your account and you can add an alias. Uh, so you can send with that address also. So that, again, that allows you to send with send mail with an alias using this pretty easily. And it also allows you to set up forwarding uh, uh, routing rules uh, uh, with aliases. And, and um, that way you can use aliases to sign up for accounts, for example, for various purposes, and then uh, and still get them, you know, into multi, even multiple people's inboxes. So th there's a lot of uses for it. And uh, I just wanted to share that because it's kind of like an involved process, ridiculously so, I would I would say. Um, and uh, it, it certainly has some value to me. So hope you guys got some value as well. Please make sure to like and uh, subscribe and comment. And I look forward to uh, catching you in the next video. Thanks. Bye-bye.